Today's guitar tip is brought to you by Arpeggiato, my online music school specializing in all things that go pluck. You can sign up for online lessons with one of our expert teachers in instruments like classical guitar, fingerstyle guitar, oud, lute, and many more. So head over to arpeggiato.com to learn more, and don't forget to grab a ticket to one of our online monthly events. Hey friends. Eight years ago, I released this song, Gymno Pity No. 1 by Eric Satie, which was originally written for a piano. And I recorded it for my YouTube channel, and a lot of you have asked me in those eight years, <laughs> basically, how do you do these really cool bell-like sounds? Uh, well, they're called artificial harmonics, and I thought today I could teach you how to do it. And the good news is whether you play a nylon string guitar or steel string, acoustic, electric, if you play with nails or without nails, you can still play artificial harmonics. So if you have a guitar, go ahead and grab it and uh, get ready to learn this really cool technique. All right, if we're gonna get good at this technique of playing uh, artificial harmonics, we first must make sure we're really good at natural harmonics. So what is a harmonic? Uh, well, it gets pretty scientific pretty quick, but to simplify, every note consists of a fundamental pitch, and that's the pitch that we're perceiving. Bum. It's the note you would say, oh, that sounds like an E. However, it's not just an E. That pitch is actually made up of an overtone series, which is a series from that note we're hearing, the fundamental. There exists a series of frequencies above that pitch, and the amalgam of those frequencies make up that note. So believe it or not, within this sound you're actually hearing, and more notes that are actually too high for us to even perceive. In fact, how loud or soft those overtones are in their intensity is actually what controls the, the timbre. And so a harmonic is just when we isolate one of these pre-existing overtones. So for example, if I play this E and I want to point out one of those overtones, isolate it, that is a harmonic, that bell-like effect. And harmonics are produced on all string instruments at specific places, at different ratios along the string length. So exactly halfway between the bridge and the nut uh, is the 12th fret, and that's called a node. It's a place where the string vibrates less, apparently, and so if you just touch there lightly, that's how we produce the harmonic. If you find a different ratio, you get a different harmonic, different ratio, different ratio, of the division of the string. Okay, so let's get you doing this. If you don't know already, this is pretty simple, and actually I think it's pretty instantly gratifying, which is good news. <laughs> Take your ring finger on your fretting hand. For me, that's my left hand. We're gonna go to the 12th fret of the first string, the high E string. And we're gonna use our ring finger to basically touch so lightly, like a weight of a fly, on top of the string. And we're actually gonna position our finger directly above the metal. Normally when we pluck uh, a note, we want to put our finger inside of the fret, usually to the left, just to the left of the metal, never on top, because it buzzes, or kind of produces a muted sound. However, in harmonics you want that position, so we position our finger just above the fret without any pressure, and we pluck normally in the right hand. That's a harmonic. Now, if your harmonic didn't sound like mine, here are some quick tips that you can work on to practice this over the next week or so. In your right hand, or your plucking hand, if you pluck by the bridge, that helps bring out a clearer harmonic, as opposed to... Sounds more bell-like by the bridge. If you have nails, definitely use nail. Um, if you don't have nails, uh, and you're plucking, Pluck your hand perpendicularly to the strings, right? So not at an oblique angle, but 
more perpendicular like this. That'll give you a very clear sound. Also in your left hand, once you hear the sound of the harmonic, make sure you take off your finger. If you leave it down, the note gets muted. Did you hear I got muffled? But now watch what happens if I take my finger off. The note sustains. And the last tip I'll give you now for harmonics is a pretty cool one. Um, if you look at your fingerprint on your finger, um, there's kind of a swirl, a natural swirl that leads to the middle of the finger, kind of on the flat of the finger. So normally we play on the tip of the finger, kind of the fleshy pad of the finger. But actually, we're going to find that spot, the center of your fingerprint swirl. <laughs> and actually, if you look closely, your finger like actually has this protruding bit of flesh right there. And for me, that is the perfect harmonic point. So if we touch that ever so slightly to the string, it produces a perfect harmonic because there's so little skin on the string. It's just touching the node that we talked about earlier and nothing around it. Okay, and now that you can play a good 12th fret harmonic on the first string, this actually works on all of the strings on the 12th fret. It works because it's the halfway point of each string. And this will work actually as well on a banjo, cello, lute, theorbo, you name it. It's just the natural function of a string. You can also produce harmonics on the seventh fret and the fifth fret. There are more places like the fourth fret, which is actually the same as the ninth fret. And you can of course go even further than that, but remember those are the overtones that get so high that we can't really hear them well. You can kind of hear them on the sixth string. and then they're kind of gone. <laughs> so here's my suggestion. If you're new to harmonics, or even if you've done it before, I'd like to push you a little farther. Uh, stick with the 12th fret, seventh and fifth. You have lots of different strings and notes there you could play, and I want you to try and improvise or even compose a song using those notes. Just pluck miscellaneous strings and see if you can come up with something catchy. It's pretty easy to kind of everything you do sounds kind of cool. In fact, I even remember from high school, I even composed a little melody once using these harmonics. So have fun at this point and get really good at making strong, clear, uh, bell-like harmonics. Okay, we're about to go to the next level. If you need more time, if you feel like that's pretty new for you, don't hesitate to spend a week and just get really good at those harmonics. But if you're ready to move on, let's go. Uh, the next level will be to play those same natural harmonics, but all in the right hand. So the way we do that is we're going to go to the same note we found before. First string, 12th fret, but this time, instead of using our left hand, we're actually going to touch the 12th fret on that same point, the little swirl of your fingerprint, uh, very, very lightly. So it's the index finger of your plucking hand, actually. For me, it's my right hand. So this now leaves the rest of your hand free, and there's two ways to pluck the string from here. We can either do what a lot of steel string and finger style guitarists do, which is you can kind of bring your elbow down, and then you use your thumb. My thumb's back here, and it's actually gonna be the one that, that plucks the string. So with my index finger extended, touching the harmonic, but not pushing, my thumb will pluck the string. And so you can play all the things I played earlier with that effect. And that does work. The other way is you touch the, the node, the harmonic, but instead of bringing your thumb down, you use your ring finger. I like this a lot more. 
Uh, and the main reason is because I don't have to kind of change my whole hand position, but maybe even more importantly, this frees up my thumb and other fingers to actually still pluck. So when I pluck a harmonic, I can pluck other notes and then play harmony. So choose which one feels good to you. And either way, I would again point out this would be a good point to spend a little bit of time and just get really used to this. In terms of accuracy and clearness uh, in each bell-like harmonic. Okay, let's move on to the last step, which is artificial harmonics. Uh, but before I get there, I just want to say, if you're enjoying my guitar tips and want to see more, I actually have a bunch of patron-only guitar tips already uploaded to my Patreon. And so if you want to support this channel, uh, that would be very kind of you. And also you would get access to all of those extra guitar tips instantly, as well as all this behind the scenes content and more. So check that out if you're interested. But let's get back to the artificial harmonics, our, our last step of the day. If you feel uncomfortable at all with the right hand, alone harmonics, make sure you spend some extra time there because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add an extra layer, sort of like you know rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time. Um, so we have to be really secure in the right hand because now we're gonna bring the left hand back in to do something, something else. If you remember, the natural occurring harmonics only happen at nodes at certain places like the 12th, 7th, 5th, and other places, but you can't produce any pitch you want. By adding the left hand in, what we're going to do is we're going to basically turn the entire fretboard into accessible um, harmonics so that we can play virtually any note. And this is a pretty cool thing because this means we can play melodies and scales and improvise sort of in any direction rather than relying on whatever happens to be naturally occurring on the string. Okay, so let's learn it. If you remember, the 12th fret harmonic uh, produces a note which is an octave higher than the open string. And that's because it's exactly half the length of the open string, right? The 12th fret is exactly at the halfway point. Now, here's the cool thing. What happens if I hold down the first fret on the first string? Now actually, for all intents and purposes, my string isn't from here to here, it's just from here to the first fret. So I've shortened the string, and I've moved the halfway point to the 13th fret. So that means if I hold down the F on the first fret of the first string, and now if I want to play a harmonic in the right hand, I have to play the 13th fret. But it works. I can go back to the 12th fret if I let go of the left hand. If I put back the left hand, I have to play the 13th. If I move this up to the second fret, it's always 12 frets higher. 12 frets is an octave. That means I play the 14th. If I move it up again, that's the 15th. So let's take a little melody. How about E, F, G, F, E? In tab, it's 0, 1, 3, 1, 0. In harmonics, it'd be 12, 13, 15, 13, 12. So here we go. Ready? Go. It's a pretty cool effect. Now this is the really cool moment because we can keep going with this to play basically whatever we want now, but in harmonics. I can play full scales if I want. Basically whatever my left hand does, my right hand has to mirror it an octave higher. So let's have a little fun. How about let's do the melody to the Force theme from Star Wars. <laughs> I'll do the exact same thing, but in harmonics. And in fact, this is where that idea I mentioned before comes in handy. If we use our ring finger to pluck, we leave our thumb free to play open strings. In fact, in this case, we can play an open E um, at various points, which adds a thicker sound. and then an A at the end to change the, the harmony. 
And to me at least, this is super cool because what we've done is we've kind of taken the normal plucking sounds of a guitar and we've expanded its possibilities to include timbres and sounds which aren't normally associated with the guitar. And that just makes it a fuller, more developed instrument. Another great effect we can do here now that we've learned how to play artificial harmonics is to play arpeggios. So an arpeggio means a broken chord. This is a chord. And to stagger those notes is to break the chord. And that's what an arpeggio means. And we can in fact do arpeggios now in harmonics, which is actually easier than it sounds. Because all we have to do is play the chords in our left hand that we already know, and then find the notes to pluck out in the right hand. Let's take some easy chords. Let's start with E minor, and then going to A minor. Okay, so let's hold down an E minor chord in our fretting hand, my left hand. And this is pretty cool because actually, if you remember, most of the strings are open except for the fourth and the fifth, which are played on the second fret, which means any of those strings, I can just play the 12th fret, our normal uh, octave harmonic. And then just for those two strings, I have to go to the 14th, and then I get to go back to the 12th. So I can arpeggiate that chord however I want now. And then, here's the cool part, I can switch to A minor in my left hand, leave it there, and now play the corresponding harmonics again. On the first string, that's 12, second string is 13, and then 14, 14, 12, 12. And now we can have some fun. I can just switch back and forth to create new sounds. So please start grabbing some chords and improvising using these techniques. You can improvise and compose endlessly here. In fact, I was just fooling around recording here and I found some really cool chords that sound really beautiful in artificial harmonics that I hadn't played before. Borrowing an A minor chord and then D minor, I, th I think this sounds particularly harp-like. For me, the highest level of artificial harmonic playing comes when you play completely separate lines while playing artificial harmonics. You can play accompaniment and a melody uh, in harmonics, just like we do. In that Gymnopédie number one by Eric Satie we started with today. So I'm gonna show you how to play a bit of a simplified version for now. harmonics are just the exact same notes in the melody, this part, but 12 frets higher, and now we get this. And with those thumb bass notes, There are more notes involved there, and we can actually, with the other fingers that aren't being used, find more strings to pluck, but then we get quite advanced. I would encourage you to find an arrangement of this uh, and give that a go if you're interested. But at least for now, we got you playing artificial harmonics. And the main thing I wanted to do today is, is show you this wonderful world of new sounds you can make on the guitar. And I really hope you learn to improvise and compose using this. Explore these sounds. They're so magical and uh, ripe for music making. So. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks again for watching. And please do check out my Patreon if you're interested in more guitar tips and behind the scenes content. See you next time.